Ahoy there, fellow sleuths. A lot has come to light in Death and Other Details Episode 3, so let's get decoding. We're only on Episode 3, so I'm going to wait until after about Episode 5 to try and come up with some type of unified theory. I think a big part will be coming up with a solid timeline. I've noticed some details about the changing of clothes that's throwing things off, and I'm going back trying to create a timeline of all the events, but until I do that, I can't know for sure or have a solid idea of what's going on. For right now, let's go over some of the characters. First and foremost, uh, one of my favorite characters, Imogene. I don't believe she's the antagonist, but I will say I feel as if there's more to her going on than she's letting on. It's been stated every episode that she's a thief. In episode 1, her mother talks about her stealing from Anne. Episode 2, Cotsworth calls her a thief, stealing money from the Colliers. And in the latest episode, Teddy calls her a thief and calls her a bad one for trying to break into the safe and maybe other information that she knew about her previously. One of the people that have become more interesting to me this episode is Mr. Bandari, the owner of the boat, and his part in all of this. Something strange is going on. He hired Jules in London a few weeks before the ship set sail. We all know now that Jules is a criminal with a long rap sheet, and I feel as if Mr. Bandari knew exactly who he was hiring, and it was not just to be the head of his security. And also, it's good to know from the trailer that Jules will get his wish. He will be on land at some point in the show, hopefully before he can be questioned by Interpol again. As Jules is currently hiding out in what appears to be the mechanical area of the boat, he may have even been wearing a mechanical crew uniform. It looks as if it might have had some reflective pieces to it, yellow stripes going along the sides. I feel as if Mr. Bondari is helping him hide. Even more so, the boat crew are not as clean as they seem. Why would you need a secret passageway to get to this section of the ship? Also, documents including passports belonging to Jules were found in a crewmate Simon's room, a man who stated that these rich folks do not see them as human. So staff seem to be a part of something that's going on, but what it is exactly... I'm not sure, but I do have some ideas. But let me get through everything else first. Adding to another layer of it is Anna's wife, Lelia. She was followed by Imogen going into this hidden door on the boat, but even that itself wasn't so simple. We see Imogen follow her in two different outfits in that hallway. When Imogen saw Lelia grab rope, a knife, and duct tape, she was wearing a white top, but when she enters in through the secret compartment, she's wearing a black and white top. So it seems as if she followed her, was not able to find her, and went back to the spot again to try and figure it out, and then successfully figured out where she went. It doesn't seem as if Lelia didn't know about the spot. She knew exactly where she was going. I don't think she found this door the same way Imogen did. She knows something more about this boat, about people who are there, possibly Jules. In episode one, the way Lelia looked at Anna rubbed me the wrong way. It's hard to explain. It's as if I'm playing you or I don't actually love you. It's really hard to... But when they were laying down on the floor after Anna broke the curtain, there was this look in her eye was just off. Something tells me that whatever happened with her accident, she's not paranoid for no reason. Someone talked to her, maybe someone related to Victor Sams. I don't know what she's doing, but she is scared for some reason. And I think someone is making good on a promise or making good on on something they asked her to do for them. From the look in her eyes in episode one, it looks as if she was in on it the whole time, but I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt that something happened and she feels forced to comply with these people to do something. The Colliers have a lot going on. 
First, Imogen finally had a look at the company records. For the most part, looked clean other than that bill of lading. It was printed on this blue paper. It was about a blue pigment that was banned from use in 1989 because it causes cancer and a bunch of other ailments. This is the same color blue as Imogene's mother's scarf, and strangely, a cocktail that we see Lawrence drinking in the first two episodes. I don't know what this means, but I think the answer lies in the company files. When Mr. Bondari opens up the safe, we see three suitcases, and granted, there was likely more that we couldn't see because the angle of the camera but when Anna brings them to Carolina, she brings five suitcases. But at the beginning of episode six, Keith Trubitsky, aka Danny, is talking to someone loading up these suitcases to bring them on the ship. And we see six. So there is a suitcase missing. And I am imagining that it is the same suitcase that the lawyer, Llewellyn, gave to Teddy the night the ship took sail. I don't know what's in it, but I would assume that these are the files that would incriminate the Colliers to their shady business dealings and maybe what would make them look bankrupt. We also get Anna talking to her father directly for the longest period of time, and he states that Anna has made some business deals that caused the Colliers to get close to bankrupt to basically ruin the company. And now she set up this deal with the Chuns in order to try and fix it. The Collier's being broke is a secret that she seems to have kept from Imogen and kept from her wife. But with everything going on with Lelia, something tells me that she may already know. We also see clearly that Anna's mother, Catherine Collier, is having an affair with the Kingmaker. They appear to want their relationship public, but obviously are not in a place to do that at this time. Catherine states to the Kingmaker that Anna knows how to keep secrets. This may be a nod to the fact that Anna knows that her mother forged Lawrence's name on the Chapter 11 paperwork or that the Colliers are broke themselves. But if Anna knows this information, it's possible that she bankrupted the company on purpose. Now, hear me out. It's a little wild, but Winnie stated that people have died on the boat and there was no investigation. She stated that a previous crew member, I believe her name was Vicky, was thrown overboard after she seemingly slit her wrists. We see someone going over the ship in the trailer. If Catherine Collier was the super PAC donor that asked Governor Alexandria to make good with Keith Trubitsky and unknowingly had her send the cart to his room with the killer inside, I'm assuming that they are trying to pin Keith's death on Lawrence and then have him file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and then kill himself, quote unquote, over the pain. And I'm sure she will get a very nice life insurance policy also. And then she would be free to be with the Kingmaker as she clearly wants to be. In episode one, Teddy quotes the poet Wallace Stevens, who was also an insurance executive. If she or others in the boat are in on the Wallaces going bankrupt, it could be that company Greystone Howard who will gain the Collier's assets. And I believe someone on this boat has a hand in Greystone Howard. Madam Chun was shown to be watching a show where a man had an altercation and states he exposed another man's secrets and stole his wife. I believe that this is a reference to the Kingmaker and his part in all of it. I also noticed that the governor, Alexandra, had a cough and the Kingmaker made a very idle threat to her. I believe that she is being poisoned with the B12 injections that she takes probably daily there, maybe multiple times. Could these injections have that same blue pigment in it or something like that? I don't think so. The vitamins in the saline bag did not have a blue tint, but it does make me think that it's possible that Imogen's mother's blue scarf may have been made with that same blue pigment. And if she could give a date on that scarf, like a year was produced, it could prove that the Collier's were doing something illegal. 
I know this is a whole lot of crazy things going on. It kind of feels like a murder at the Orient Express situation. I said I wasn't going to try and make unified theory, but it's just coming out this way. Catherine Collier and the Kingmaker knew that Keith Trebinsky was Danny. They planned on framing Lawrence for his murder, forging his name for Chapter 11, did not want the deal to go through with the Chuns whatsoever, and then kill him and throw him off the boat in order for at least Catherine to skate out into the sunset with her husband and all the money she wants. And possibly Anna is in on it. If Anna isn't in on it, her wife is in on it, and Anna had no idea. But I feel as if Anna bankrupting the company may have been on purpose. There's some holes in there. I don't know what's going on. There's so many questions, like what was in the briefcase? Is the lawyer, Llewellyn, still in that closet getting his jollies on? What is Lelia's part in all of this? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm hoping that I can get a timeline put together. I've got some pieces, but I feel like I need a little bit more in order to know what's going on. Again, let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you below deck.